Okay, I wanted to save this part of wisdom because it's a very special thing. We've seen wisdom up to eight chapters as a street preacher. As someone going knocking on doors and telling people about Jesus. We've seen the wisdom to be the Holy Spirit. Now, when we pick up in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22, wisdom here is not an attitude of God, but it is God. And more so the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to read Schofield's note here, a few notes that you know he's got in here that are, are true and right. That wisdom is more than the personification of the attitude of God or of the will of God as best for man, but in distinct uh, aberration of Christ is sure to be devout mind. Proverbs 8, 22 to 36 with John 1, 1 through 3. And Colossians 1, 17 can refer to nothing less than the eternal Son of God. You gotta remember, Jesus Christ, who is the Son, is also the Creator. And that is what we're going to get into this wisdom here. We're going to get into wisdom even before Genesis 1-1. <clears throat> and what we don't understand, what we can't comprehend, before Lucifer or Satan, before the heavens, before the cherubim, before the angels, I don't know about the throne, but maybe even before the throne of God, there has always been God. And the Bible takes it for granted. What was God before everything? He was wisdom. And he was God. And you've got more to prove with 66 books about God and who he is and what he is. And the witnesses of man, of angels, even Satan. When we read our Bible tonight in Mark, one of the, the devils cried out, I adjure thee by God. Imagine a devil bringing up God as a Solomon oath. You have no witnesses of the Big Bang. Satan, the arch enemy, the enemy of God, even has to say, Amen, glory to God, that he made it all. All right. Proverbs 8, 22. Wisdom. The Lord possessed me. Kept. In the beginning of his way from the beginning of his way God's way the only way you can be safe as, as a human a creature of God is you do it God's way before his works of old and I'll be throwing scripture out there for you to go look for yourself 1 Corinthians 15 28 Again, John 1, 1 through 3. Uh, Colossians 1, 13, 2, 9. Proverbs 30, verse 4. Wisdom was there before the angels and Lucifer and man and earth. We're not doing the gap theory between Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 1, 2. No, we're going before Genesis 1, 1. I was set up from everlasting, eternal. From the beginning, or ever the earth was, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. But even before that beginning, you know who God is? You know who Jesus Christ is? Wisdom. How wise is God? Well, he made man to need drink and food. He provided man the drink and the food. 
Imagine if evolution would would have put your nose where your smelly feet were. You have to smell your feet all day long. God put your nose right where it needed to be put. I would even go so far to say, under my own thing, you don't have to take this. This is for maybe God knew we'd be wearing glasses one day and made it so we could keep the glasses up. God has foreknowledge. Listen, to say God made a nose to hold glasses up is a whole lot better than to say that we came from palm scum and you can't prove it. I lead in the way of righteousness, never evil. Never wickedness. God's wisdom is in righteousness. In the midst, in the middle of the path of judgment. So wisdom is righteousness and it's judgment. Judge not least you be judged. You ain't got God's wisdom. You ain't got wisdom at all. Judge not least you be judged. All right. I smell smoke. Well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. No, can't judge. Can't call a fire department because I'd be judging. You'd be stupid. There are men in the Bible who use God's wisdom, and God used them to the great fullness. And then there are men who were just like Lot, who didn't use God's wisdom and destroyed his whole family. Paul did not have a family. As far as a wife and children we know of, and we had a he had a sister and he had a nephew. But all all the children, including Timothy, that Paul had had. What happened to Lot's children? They died in the city, and, he, and two of them commit uh, incense by drunken. That. I, wisdom, may cause those that love me to inherit substance. If you love the Lord Jesus Christ and do what he tells you to do, you're going to get crowns and rewards. And he says, I will go and prepare a mansion for you. How do you love the Lord Jesus Christ? You obey what he tells you to do. He says, listen, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. What is my commandment? You need to be born again. That was a commandment. You need to believe that he was sent of the Father, and the Father sent him, and he is the Father, and the Father is him. He says, if you don't believe that, you're going to die in your sins. And I will fill their treasures, crowns and rewards, in verse 21. 777. Seven, seven. See, we're, we're still talking about wisdom. I was set up everlasting from the beginning, or ever the earth was, when there was no depths. No waters, no space, no measurement, no time. I was brought forth. Now brought means to bring closer. That mean that did not mean that God created Jesus Christ. That means he says, Jesus, son, come forward. Let's see what let's see what our holiness can do. And from that time forth, when the Son and the Father and the Father and Son said, Let's make us angels. Let's make us cherubim. Let's make us a bowl. Come forth, Son, and be part of it. When there was no fountains abounding with water. There was no water. Hebrews 1 Five. And I read a note here. Before the mountains 
were settled. What was there? God. What was there? Jesus. Where did they come from? That's not even a question in chapter 8. The Bible takes it for granted that God has always been. Explain it. I cannot. I can't even explain H2O. I can't explain oxygen. I breathe oxygen, but in my water there's oxygen. And I've got a wonderful God that when you take hydrogen or oxygen, which is extremely flammable, you put them together in the right way, they put out fire. I'm going to take like the Bible takes for granted, and I believe it by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You can have whatever faith you want. That's wrong. God has always been. That's what the Bible says. Before the hills was I brought forth, came close. So God exalted his son before anything. And you're going to tell me that your works can get you into heaven outside of what Jesus Christ, the sinless God, done? You weren't even there in before the beginning, if I can say that. While as yet he, God, had not made the earth, there was, there was a time there was no earth. And God and the Son were there. S-O-N. Nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. So what happens when the earth and the universe are burnt up, according to Peter? It is just God and you. You look down and your feet are not standing on any ground. You look around, you ain't going to see no stars. You ain't going to see a moon. You ain't going to see a sun. You ain't going to see the earth. You're just going to see a great white throne judgment. Maybe that throne has always been. When he, God, prepared the heavens, So the heavens weren't always to be. I was there. Wisdom. In the beginning was the word. The word, the word was God. The word. John 1.1. 1, 1. When God made Genesis 1.1. 1, 1, Jesus Christ was right there. Again. Not an attribute of God. Wisdom. But wisdom being God. And wisdom being Jesus Christ. When he set a compass, that's a circle, upon the face of the de of the depth. Imagine the God that was there before it was all there. Taking a crown of thorns by a by a cursing of man, of rebelling against what God told him to do, and putting it upon his forehead for him to bleed. Taking a leather strap, which is made by an animal that God, that Jesus Christ made for food and for belts and for uh, uh, clothes. Ah, whatever you do with leather, taking that leather that came from a cow that Aaron made a similitude of and they worship, beating his back with a cat of nine tails. That is the God that we are talking about here before Genesis 1. When he established the clouds above, there was a time there were no clouds. The Bible says that God is light. Can you imagine this complete universe with no darkness at all? It, as far as from no east, there was no west. 
as far as no, no north and no south, there was a time that everything was bright light and love. God is light and God is love. You burn your eyeballs out because you can't even look at the sun. When the earth was dark and void, that was because of what Satan did and the judgment placed upon the earth. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep, Genesis 7 11. When the fountains were made, those are the fountains that were opened up during Noah's time. When he, God, gave to the sea his decree, Genesis 1 9 and 10, Job 38 10 and 11, Psalm 33 7. Psalms 104, 9, Jeremiah 5, 22, that the waters should not pass his commandment. You know, God gave a commandment to the waters. You stay right there. Aren't you glad waters listen to God? No, I don't think God really meant to stay there. I want to. We'd be in trouble if God's creation didn't listen to listen to God like man and Satan. Name a commandment of God, you know, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Water, stay there. Where'd you get that one? Chapter 8 of Proverbs. When he, God, appointed the foundations of the earth. Hebrews 1, 3. The earth has a foundation and all the men build foundations upon the foundation but that which is laid Jesus the important foundation see before the foundation of the earth there was the foundation Jesus Christ Peter says the earth is going to burn up, and when it burns up, there's only one foundation left, Jesus Christ, and you better be built upon him. You better not be built upon some gas that exploded. Gas is not a foundation you build upon. You build upon God. Then, John 1, 1, 2, and verse 18, Colossians 1, 17, I was by him, Jesus Christ, with God, as one brought up, bring closer, with him. And I was daily his delight. There is no time in eternity. Time only comes when he made the sun and the moon and stars for season. And that's the case. 4,000 years B.C., 2014 years A.D., for how many days you find in 6,014 years, every single day, Jesus Christ is God's delight every day. I wonder how many days that is. My calculator wouldn't even figure it out. I get that E. I get the the, the number point zero zero and then the E. I can't even figure it out. I bet you there's a number a lot bigger than what the, the deficit of America is. Rejoicing always before him. So God has delight in Jesus, and Jesus re rejoices before the Father. You want to go to a place where there's always misery and torments and, and sin and wickedness and darkness? You don't want to you don't want to go somewhere where there's delight and there, there's rejoicing always? Rejoicing in the 
habitable part of his earth. Okay, now, now here's the earth. So that time frame is after Genesis 1, 2. After the sun and moon. Now the earth is here. God looked down upon the earth and saw the... Now this is man, or this is what was before Adam. I enjoy that. Look at that. In Revelation 4, we are made to praise him. We are made to glorify him. Unto Satan. He said, I want that mountain. That mountain is mine. And my delights were with the sons of men. Well, there's Adam. There's the children of Adam. There's Enoch. Enoch, we're having a great time. Where am I? You're in heaven, Enoch. Wow. You mean I didn't even die? Nope, you didn't die. Elijah, come. You had a pretty hard time down there, didn't you? Yeah, Lord, I did. Huh? You were made to be a delight to the Lord by doing what he told you to do. There was no delight when God walked in the garden that day and said, Adam, where are you? It was the delight of God to have Abel bring that offering to the altar. It was a delight for God to say, Noah, I got something for you to do. Yes, Lord, what? I want you to build an ark. Okay. Really? You're going to build it? Yeah. Tell me what you want, Lord. I'll do it. Noah, you know, I got, a, I got something else for you. What's that, Lord? I want you to preach to all those people while you're doing it. While they're mocking you, while they're scoring you, while they're they're throwing things at you, while they're, they're you know they're they're having a a picnic there and, and harassing you, I want you to preach. Okay, Lord. Really, you're gonna do? Yeah, I'm gonna do it, Lord. And he did it. Now, therefore, hearken unto me. We jump to Solomon speaking. To Rehoboam? No. O ye children. Jewish children? No. I don't see Jewish children. I don't see my son. I see children. When the Holy Spirit wants to say a Jewish child or a Jewish daughter, he will mention Jewish. He will mention the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He will say, your people, my people. But he says, children. The whole earth. For blessed are they that keep my ways. What is the ways of Solomon? Doing what God had told him to do. You know when he's writing up the chapter 8 so you know he's walking with the Lord. I mean he's getting that silver. He's getting the animals and building up the wives. His heart's still right. Look what we've been reading. Everything against the world and against the strange woman, against the wickedness, against those that don't love God. Do right. Get wisdom. Keep her. Listen to your mother and father. Then listen, he's in it. For blessed are they that keep my ways. Happy. You want to be happy, you do what God tells you to do in the Bible. Proverbs is in the Bible. Happiness does not come in rebellion. Ask Adam and Eve. Ask David when he went for this little walk. Ask Solomon when he married his wife 1,000. And built his seventh or eighth or how many temple in the mountains. Even Jonah, he finally did what God told him to do, but he did it with an improper heart. And he's sitting underneath a gourd angry.
Peter got so angry, he cursed the Lord out before that cock crew for the second time. Three times. Why? Because he did not believe and do what Jesus told him to do. Instead of arguing with the Lord, he said, Lord, I'm going to deny you three times? Yes, Peter. That's for sure God. You know, Philip, uh, uh, Thomas said, my Lord, my God, right? Yes, Peter. And I believe that thou art the Christ, right? Yes, you do. If I'm going to do that, will you forgive me right now for doing it? And do it because you told me I'm, you, I'm going to do it? And can we get it settled right away after I do it? Would it have been a lot different? Instead of Peter looking, when he finally does that third time, he, he denounces the Lord. And the Lord, the Bible says, one of God says, he turned and looked, and Peter ran and wept bitterly. It would have been a lot different for, if Peter would run up to Jesus, wrap his arms around and say, I did it. I'm sorry, Lord. He wasn't happy. And when you get involved in sins, you're not happy. You cannot be happy in your sins. It's a violation of what God said. And it's when you apply first John, when you do sin in your life, and you're truly honestly sorry that you committed that sin and you confess it before God and your father reaches down and he puts his holy hand upon your head and says it's okay now need to work on that a little bit longer but it's okay hear instruction 8 chapters and 33 verses so far and we got a whole bunch more We've got 66 books to hear instruction. The commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ is to love the brethren, even if they don't love you. Even if they're unlovable. Even if they're a pain. Love them and pray for them. Okay, Lord. And then when you turn to somebody and you say, Oh, will you pray for us? We, we got this problem. And then you see your prayer answered because you've been praying for the other brethren. Somebody had made, hey, no, hey, they said pray for, I'll pray for them. And be wise. What has been, the, what has this whole chapter been talking about wisdom? It is something obtainable by God. It is something that God wants you to have. It is the very words of God. It is to fear the Lord. It's to hate certain things that God hates. It was there in the beginning, before the beginning was ever to be, that God was there, and then the earth and everything was made by this wisdom, which means you can have the very wisdom that God had when he made everything that was made. How would you like to have in your life the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, and God, God and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and the wisdom that they created everything be with you? Go ask a, a theistic evolutionist. Well, yeah, God made it all, but then God just set it off and let it go. That's not what the Bible says. I have the wisdom of God. I know exactly what, and I know if I had to go back to chapter 1, I can find the exact order that God made it to be. And I can tell you how many days it took. I can tell you who came first, the chicken or the egg. The chicken, because God don't lay eggs. I can tell you that God did something really foolish to, in the eyes of man. He made plants before he made the sunlight. And then some idiot will say, well, it was a thousand years instead of, really? You can't keep a plant in darkness for at least seven days without it showing signs of death. I 
know that. I know that Jesus was there according to the Gospel of John. I have the wisdom that was there. I may not know perfectly and how exactly God did it, but I know God did it, and I believe that. So God imputes to me the wisdom that he had when he made it all. How is that? You want me to get talking about the, the enemy, Lucifer, and how and he became Satan, the dragon, and sir, I can tell you about that, and I wasn't even there. God knew, the prophets of God knew that the world was round before Christopher Columbus even was born and, and had a rattle in his hand. And he really didn't prove the world was round because he was on his way to China and ran into a land in the middle of the way. He never did find out the land the world was round. The world wasn't circum circumnavigated yet. They just knew that there was another body of land over there. They thought it was China. That's why they call them Indians. They're not Indians. They're called Native Americans. Indians are over in India. He thought he went around the world. He didn't. He just took a royal uh, cruise to the Caribbean. That's what he did. Let's get history taught right. And refuse it not. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Yeah, keep your religion to yourself. You're bothering me. I'm trying to buy stuff. You, you're upset me trying to force your religion down me. Well, I'm a Catholic. Oh, I don't believe in God. Satan rules. Those are people who are refusing the instruction of God. Don't you get offended the way they treat you. They're treating God, not you. You're just a messenger. Blessed is the man. Happy is the man. I forget which. I think it was Leah. One of the boys she had. She said, I'm going to name him. I forget the name. But blessed is going to make me happy. Happy. Blessed is the man that heareth me. Somebody hears the gospel. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Watching daily at my gates. Looking for the blessed hope and the great and the glorious spirit of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm not a religion looking for Armageddon. I won't even be here for that. I'm not looking for the mark. I'm not stocking food and all that, and you know, because to beat the antichrist. I'm not going to be here for that. I'm looking for the blessed hope. I'm looking for Jesus. While I carry the wisdom out to people who are lost, while I carry wisdom trying to those Christians to help them do what God wants them to do, waiting at the post of my door. And what verse can you get that from Jesus Christ? I stand at the door and knock. Behold, if any man open unto me, I will come unto him and sup with him and he with me. You ready for this one? For whosoever finds me, we're, we're back to wisdom, it was not Solomon. You know, it's not like Solomon goes, okay, children, let's play hide and go see. Okay, you found me, you got life. No! You found Solomon hiding seat, and someone else has got to hide and count to ten and goes, that, that, that's not, who shall find me? The wisdom. Who's the wisdom? Findeth life. Who or what in the Bible, if you find, will give you eternal life? Who is it over and over and over in the Gospels? Who is it over and over in the writings of Paul? If thou shalt believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in shall have everlasting life, shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. He that has the Son has life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. 
The wisdom we have been reading about in chapter 8 is Jesus. He's the one that gave his life, John chapter 1. And you ready? Ready? And obtain favor of the Lord, capital L, capital R, capital D. You get favor from God Almighty by going to life with his, his, his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, God gives you favor. Now that favor is not the, it's not the, it's the life. That life is already given to you. Besides the life, He will give you favor. He'll give you knowledge of His Word. He'll give you knowledge of what He wants. He'll give you knowledge of who, you, who He is. He'll give you the ability to go out and give people that life to others and then he'll reward you with crowns he'll reward you with cities he'll reward you with honor all because of the son but he that sinneth against me the wisdom Jesus Christ that giveth life wrongeth his own soul not body not spirit not money not a spouse not your children not your possessions your soul now you ready for this one Anybody who has not received Jesus Christ as their Savior hates Jesus Christ. Or else they would receive him. Either love or you hate. There's no in between. So all they that hate me love death. I'm going to go to John chapter 3. I don't know. I know in these lessons we don't usually do scripture, but John chapter 3. We will read verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life that's the life we just read in chapter 8 of Proverbs for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved there's a light he that believes on him is not condemned life but he that believeth not is condemned already death because he has not Believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. Wisdom. This is the condemnation. That light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. Death. Now jump over to verse 36. This will match Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. Let me look real quick. Proverbs chapter 8. When we read that. Look real quick. It gave you in verse 35 and 36. Now watch John. Watch John the Baptist. Take verse 35 and 36. And put it in one verse. Ready? Verse 36. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. That matches verse 35 of, John, of Proverbs 8. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. That matches verse 36 of Proverbs 8. John the Baptist gives us in verse 36, verses 35 and verse 36 of Proverbs 8. And that is the last testimony of John the Baptist. 
He just gave you Proverbs chapter 8. John chapter 3 gave you Proverbs 8 as far as wisdom in life goes. And those that love death and hate Jesus, verse 36 of John 3, 60, 3, 36. You can't have both. Verse 19 of John chapter 3, those that, that hate Jesus Christ, they love death. They love darkness. That's, that's what death is, you know. In that coffin, in the tomb, it's dark. Hell is dark. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That is the only way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Proverbs chapter 8, you can't take anybody but Jesus Christ. And Solomon says, go get that wisdom. Go get that wise. You mean the wisdom that Jesus Christ is, I can have. I can get it. The same one that made the heavens and the earth. I can get it. It's, avail it's available for me. Now, anything better than the Bible? Any other book, magazine? Never. Oh, I go to Christian movies. They ain't going to tell you nothing. By hearing of the word.